Let's talk. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. With the man himself. The facilitator. Ooh, he just named himself. The facilitator. We I were looking it. for titles earlier in the week. So, should I introduce myself? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I'm Ryan Tierney. Uh, I am formerly known as the facilitator, but I'm today's guest. Love that. Welcome. Ryan, part Welcome. of the team. Finally putting a face to the name. Yep. A name to the face. Behind this the scenes. This is it right here. He's behind the He's scenes. He's gorgeous. He really is. Look at that hair. Oh, oh my God. Stop, stop, stop. Just got that fresh cut for the fresh cast. Oh, yeah. The viewers, know, the viewers know from the, the Pitbull podcast that uh, <laughs> I don't do too well on the head. But <laughs> For those who Come don't on, know man. what that is, episode number two, our Halloween costume episode. I'm, I'm very bald. You're I'm still bald. gorgeous. You got locked, dog. <laughs> like, cost 50 bucks though to get this thick luxurious hair you Pizza know how much Pete. it costs to cut my hair zero dollars <laughs> i do it myself Wait, actually that's a flex that's that a is huge right flex. i save so much money oh all right ryan so we asked you earlier in the week we went right up to you and we said hey yo like give us a couple topics like what what are you passionate about you hear us talk all mm-hmm. the time and we want to hear from you so today we're going to have you kind of run today's conversation, and we're going to ask you really good questions along the way. We're going to see where it takes us, but tell the audience what we're going to talk about today. Well, before we get into that, you Ooh. just said something that like really like touched my heart a little bit because you said, I want to hear from you, and that's something that people don't really say to me. I kind of just you know oh. drift in the back, so that's kind, of, that's kind of something that really hits deep to me. Um, so thank you, actually. Thank Chills. you. Of course, bro. Of course. But... Uh, I'm talking about being calm and the idea of being calm, like of calmness and hopefully if we can get into it, maybe some active listening, mm. which I think totally resembles you. Yeah. When I think of Ryan, I think of calm. When so, I, when I think of Ryan, I think of May camp and like mm. just, wow, just a, a kid that was there. Didn't really talk to him too much, but like his presence was known. Mm. And then one mm-hmm. night he's having some fun. Just start singing. What song was it? Oh, Ooh, wow. I don't remember this. What song was that? I don't Dude, remember the song. that was, it was Queen. Queen. Um, was that Bohemian? Bohemian. Bohemian. Bro, he was yeah. yelping Bohemian. Like, he's got a gorgeous voice. Thank you. And I was like, who you is get, this you kid? Wow. Right who here. is this kid? And he was like, just this calm, chill dude. And then he just opened up, and I was like, I like him. I feel like we're going to have another one of those open up moments tonight. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not singing. I mean, I don't know how comfortable you feel, but. Maybe in another episode. Maybe in another maybe, episode. Maybe a few whiskeys. Yeah. We'll start, yeah. We'll Let's start to the bar. Let's see what happens. Uh, so stay in calm with Ryan Tierney. Yeah. So, you know, everyone thinks this idea of being calm is just, you know, the absence of like anxiety. And, you know, you're just chilling you know that's like what everyone thinks being calm is like um but for me i feel personally that the being calm is the result of practiced mindfulness and presence and or presence with oneself um you know meditation you know just sitting back and truly like feeling everything around you and your body feel the blood coursing through your veins doing that multiple times and repeatedly i feel like the result of that is just generally being calmer. Now you said absence of anxiety. Yeah. Is there a presence of something or, you know, is there a complete absence of, is there ever a complete absence of anxiety? I don't think there's ever a full absence of anxiety, but I think the term of, you know, being calm as the absence of anxiety is inherently wrong in my opinion. Right. Because there's always going to be some level of anxiety. Yeah. There's always something. There's something going on in your head, you know, like being calm is just you can just sit in the back of the room and not have to worry about what other people are like thinking about you, mm-hmm. what are, like not wanting to go talk to other people, not be a social. But, you know, you don't have the urge to, you know, be someone that you're not, you know, you know, what this reminds me of um, I am in meditation. So like when you try to meditate, um, you try to clear your mind and that is something that is taught like or perceived to be what meditating is is clearing your mind but rather than clearing your mind i think it's more so focusing your attention on one thing exactly and the one thing that i find useful for me is i am i don't know i I feel like i've mentioned this before yeah Yeah. 
But There's like a term, the Sanskrit word. Uh, soham. So soham. I am. So when I say I am, like I am Francesco Vassal, I am. I just I realize that I'm just a being on this earth, and I'm I'm one with one, and it just kind of that state of calmness. It's mm-hmm. like even though I have other thoughts in my head in that moment, I'm just super present that. I'm just a human being living my life. You mentioned it in philosophy today. Like, mm-hmm. just live your life. You know, you were given yeah. it. Just live it to the fullest. Just be mm. present where you are. But I want to ask Ryan that question. What yeah. does living life to your fullest really mean if there's never an absence of anxiety? So living, for me, living life to the fullest is experiencing, exploring, being curious. You know, that's that's being... That's living, you know, for me, because I love to just explore like I'll Internet is uh, like there's, you know, taboos about it. It's bad for you, but it helps me to explore sometimes because I'm just alone with myself and I'll look up things that I'm thinking about. Like like I was just talking about active listening, like I was just, Mm. you know, I talked about wanting to talk about on the podcast. And I was like, hey, let me just do a little deep dive. And I explored and I found a lot of cool things about it. You know, you know how much of an active listener you have to be to be a facilitator of a podcast. Mm. Think about that. Like you're yeah. really listening to every single word we say. You're processing that information, mm. and then you're capable of like searching things up to continue that conversation. Okay, now it's time. So I'm going to share something that that really directly piggybacks off of what you just said and i look up to this person as like a mentor even though he doesn't know me and he's famous however i was telling ryan this before the podcast yeah i went on twitter last night this to ry- applies directly i promise i went on twitter last night the first tweet that popped up on my feed the first tweet was by simon sinek i love this guy he said or he quoted when he said hearing is listening to what's said. Listening is hearing to what isn't said. And I, I, I read I read the tweet and I threw my phone across the room. Just threw it across the room. I was like, there's no way we're about to talk about this tomorrow. Wow. And that was the first tweet on my feed. Simon Sinek. I'll hear I'll say it one more time. Hearing is listening to what's said. Listening is hearing to what isn't said. Wow. So for you to listen deeply to what isn't being said and to facilitate conversation in that way, you are you're a master at well, you know, pra- practicing master practicing. of listening. And I feel I want to hear your take on that. I'm absolutely blown away. I totally agree with the idea of listening um to listen what isn't being said. And for me, I feel like in order to do that, you have to be calm. Mm. You you have to have a sense of calmness and presence with oneself, like I was saying, to be able to listen what's, to what's not being said. Because it's so easy to take things at face value, especially nowadays. Everything, TikTok, face value, comedy, things that get you angry, romance, everything's face value. But when you're present, you can listen to the, the finer details and expand on them. That's like a gift. So, like, we say it all the time. You want to – every conversation you have, every interpersonal experience you have, you want to learn something from that individual. But if you're not actively listening to that individual and you're just taking what they're saying at, like, face level, it's like, are you really taking something away from them? I think you're taking something away from them by taking something of yourself. Uh, yeah. Wow. Like, yeah. it's like, like, oh, I, I believe what he just said. I'm going to accept mm-hmm. that. I'm going right. to accept that into right. my life. But, but like reading between the lines and listening to a deeper message, even though if it doesn't go, if it doesn't uh, agree with your own personal philosophy, in a sense, like even if you don't fully agree with it at face value, what lies beneath the message that you can connect with. Ask the right questions. Asking the right mm. questions. Yes. We talk you about talked about that in philosophy. Yeah. Awesome. So when you find something that doesn't necessarily agree with your philosophy, ask why it doesn't. Ask how it might be able to, like things like why that. Why it exists in the first place. Exactly. And I think mm-hmm. that's where growth is like. 
So is active listening like just detaching from ourselves? In a sense, yeah. Well, so I want to read the the uh, CSU global definition of what's what. C- what's CSU? I, I forget. What is it? CSU. Oh, um, is, it a, is it a college? I didn't look up the full. I just know. I just got it off Google. Oh, first, oh, I just it, typed it, in it. Google. First thing that came up, I just like oh, copy oh, and paste. CSU you. global. It okay. says that active listening is making a conscious effort to hear, understand, and retain information that's being relayed to you. So in a sense, I think that's true. But when you said detaching from oneself, I feel like in order to do that, if you're going to go based off the definition, you have to detach. Yeah, you, ha- you have to to consciously hear somebody. You can't listen to what you're thinking. Yeah. Repeat that. I'm sorry. It's Colorado State University. It that, is. That's what I just searched. CSU. Up. But as I was searching that up, I missed what the you definition. Said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it says making a conscious effort to hear, understand, and retain information that's being um, relayed to you. Related to you? No, relate. Relay. Relay. Oh, relay. Like conveyed. Relay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and what I'm saying, like, if you need to make a conscious effort, you're you can't have your conscious blocked with thoughts, you know. Yeah, because if you're thinking like I'm really trying hard to listen yeah. to everything you're saying, me trying this hard and thinking to try this hard, I'm gonna miss everything you're mm-hmm. saying. Mm-hmm. So, like conscious awareness of like shutting off your own voice and listening to their voice, mm-hmm. listening to what isn't said can only be done when you stop listening to what's already been said in you. Damn. Might have been a little too much, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> like to what is already been that said. That went crazy. Like, in, <laughs> like to what's already been said within you, like to what you already believe. In order to listen to what isn't said, you have to turn that voice off. Mm, yes. So you're not looking at it from what you already know. You have to look at it from what you don't know. Like wow. what can you receive from the message, not what can you add to it. Exactly. Not trying to fix something. Exactly. But being empathetic with where that something is coming from. Yeah. So what are your guys' definition of active listening? So we talked about it a lot right now. What do you guys take away from active listening? Well, I don't have a definition type of thing. I'm just like from experience. Let's talk. Yeah, for me to for me to actively listen, I think I need to make solid eye contact and just feel and listen mm-hmm. body language yes, tone of voice huge. like what is he really saying how is he really feeling about that and i think i i'm empathetic wise i'm pretty decent at that but i get lost in words so i could i could feel your emotion but Sometimes words go missing and you could say something to me and I have no idea what you said, but I know how you feel about what you said. Uh, Does that make any sense? So you're being emp- like your true intention is to be empathetic and you are being empathetic, but sometimes it may not seem that way because you don't know what to say back. I feel you, but I don't understand you. Uh-huh. So it's sometimes right. tough for me to reply. So is it like that? Just go with that cliche of I feel you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I, feel you. I, fe- I felt that. Yeah, that hit. Uh huh. But then, uh, even though it hit, it's like how I just said, "Oh, that was a little well, bit too us, much." I kind of want you to walk us like through the process of like how you're able to feel it. Like, how how are you able to feel it? Is it like how do you let that guard down to begin with? Everything you just did, that look up, that how, that emphasis, that ah, uh, certain. This is why you have to watch certain listeners. tones. Yeah, of, yeah. Certain tones of voices, like I I felt your passion. With your curiosity of wanting to know, like, get inside of my brain. observation. I think so. Very, and I think that, that's, that's why huge. I'm in the field that I'm Specific in. Specific observation. Yeah. Yeah. And But and the, the point of that is you, that's you. Your eyes. You is your <laughs> eyes. I see, I see a slight. You get, so viewers that aren't watching on YouTube, like, his eyes get a little, a little bigger. His pupils dilate. And I just see like excitement and curiosity, and I want to dive into this. Mm. There's a little, a little body movement. And I, just, I just, I feel it. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. No, I agree. I mean, I, I feel it in my face when like, I totally agree with something. I'm like, but I'm not the type that's gonna like over like ex- exaggerate my reactions. So I'm just like sitting like, let's fucking go. Yeah. <laughs> 
What about you? So, yeah, so Zach, so what's I'm, yours? I'm the feel. I'm the empathy guy. Yeah. And that's totally respect. Like, that's you. Yeah. That's all fucking you. And from, from a friend aspect, I'm going to try to guess. Okay. What your... What your um, difficulty is please with listening so you're a man of first of all many opinions very knowledgeable so it's as if you know the answer to what i'm feeling before i fully express it so you want to help me right away before listening to me fully do you yes, ever feel that? Yeah, I'm going to get vulnerable here for a second because what Please. you just said is something that I've been thinking about for quite a while. Um, I do feel like I have this compulsive need, like this compulsive behavior to want to help someone so badly that my voice gets in the way of their voice sometimes. And that's why I wanted to talk about it like in a, de- like in a definitive way mm-hmm. a few minutes ago. Because I, I want to let everyone know that like I also struggle with it. So um, I often let my bias and my previous knowledge or uh, my definitions of certain words get in the way of what they're truly trying to tell me. And oftentimes, it can come off as me being arrogant. It can come off as me being a dick. It can come off as me being insensitive when really I have so genuine – true deep intentions of loving people and Mm. sometimes it just comes off as like dude like just just listen to me i don't need someone to like psychoanalyze me i get that a lot and that's something that i really try to work on so that's why i'm so interested in this conversation and that's why i got really excited when you say i want to try to guess your difficulty because i used to like years ago i would say ah you know you know, what do you think is wrong with me? But I got excited because I want to embrace growth mindset. We talk about it all the time, right? I want to embrace the fact that I have so much more to go. Like there is so much more I can do to harness my skills of simply just sitting, like just sitting, pausing, listening, because Mm -hmm. I do feel like I have an answer. I'm going to say that out loud. Sometimes I straight up, I do feel like I have an answer, but I have to remember that my answer is for me. It's not for you. It's not for you. It's not for anybody who's seeking my advice. My answer is mine. And sometimes my answer isn't always the answer. And that's something that I've been trying to work on and grow personally. But by letting that guard down, I feel like that's the, like that's the door to active listening by letting that guard down. And I'm really trying hard to do that. Wow. Have you had those difficulties on your journey of active listening? Or was it? did it just come naturally for you? Well, it's actually – that's I, I really want to talk about that. So my journey into, like, being calm and, like, really being a good listener actually stemmed from being, like, the, um, like the mute kid, you know, when I was younger. Um, everyone would, like, you know, sort of, like, cast me away because I was, like, the quiet kid and I was weird. Cause I didn't really talk to anybody like in middle school. Cool. And so I kind of fell into that demographic of being a mute. And at the time, that's all I knew. All I knew was that I don't talk to people and like, people don't like talking to me. So I'm, I might as well just like be there. With my thoughts. The helplessness. Yeah. So once I got to high school, I really like started to come out of my shell. And that's when I felt most anxious, like in my entire life. Cause I was doing something that didn't feel right to me. And because I was trying to be so extroverted and like being around people and talking to all these, like having so many friends. But deep down, I just want to have a core group of people that I enjoy talking to and listening to that that's what's really going to make me happy. Like I just need myself and the core people around me that really care, like Mm. genuinely care because I'm a big fan of like people who are tr- true to themselves and genuine how do you know i just feel it <laughs> can't i just feel it, it. true can't you can't it. explain it, it like, like it, and it's a commonality with every one of my friends like yeah. they're every one that i'm close with has that sort of genuine component to them yeah you feel listened to yeah because when you do speak it's heard yeah and i'm not cast not to just decide hurt. anymore yeah, yeah. And I found that happy medium in college. Like, college is where I really settled in 
like this like perfect you know i'm extroverted you know in certain aspects but i'm mainly introverted you know with the close people around me mm. and you guys really helped me with that for sure like being the kinesiology oh. kinesiology department with you yeah, guys yeah. like it's one big family it's been a blessing Huge. it blows my mind that we ask you to be on the podcast podcast without knowing any of that yeah this is for the viewers this is our first time list like hearing your thoughts on this and i feel like this is like a stepping stone like to be a part of this oh yeah this is like bef- like the weeks leading up to this yeah. my heart my heart was <laughs> racing heart thinking about this always. i was like dude i don't know i don't know if i could do camera work like going online like but i really just like it felt right like i couldn't say no yeah it's like a gay part too yeah you, you just, i was just thinking that you just don't know people's pasts and like where they're brought to like and like how just things happen for a reason yeah I don't know, this is like really blowing my mind right now. <laughs> I, I feel like it all starts with uh with one person just getting totally deep and vulnerable and like accepting and embracing what was and forgetting about what should be or, or what mm-hmm. could be so they can truly embrace what is. Oh my god. The bone. You know, I'd just <laughs> I'd written down a, a quote that I thought of or just like a, a little couple lines. Um, I had said, the present doesn't remember past mistakes and stressors. No, it doesn't. The it, present has zero time. There's no time in the present. When you're in the present moment, time doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. And you're the first person that said that to me too, and I totally resonate with that. Yeah, well, I got it from Eckhart Tolle. Shout out to The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. He is amazing. <laughs> like, I needed that pause in there, but like, the present moment has changed my life. I know that now it's changed Ryan's life. I know it's changed your life. Like the time doesn't exist in the present moment because the present moment is the definition of presence. It's the definition of being mm. of essence of what, tr- what is truth. It's truth can only be felt, right? You can't explain truth without feeling it. Right. And sometimes the explanation doesn't do justice to the feeling itself. And so explaining truth could cause wars, religion, right? Religion, trying to explain truth, God's word, right? What is God? Why God? Drawing lines, what's true, Drawing what's lines, not, what's, right. Right. what's accepted, what's not. So <laughs> this ties back to active listening. Yep. How does a Christian actively listen to a Muslim? And I, I – completely I, I apologize if if those stereotypes offend offended anybody out there who's listening i really do I, I come at this from a truly educational perspective i really just want i just kind of the only two religions that popped up into my head in the moment but honest like question like what 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 stops a christian from listening to a muslim or vice versa you know like what where is that barrier what's mm. the what stops a a Democrat from talking to a Republican, there, especially exactly. nowadays? Yeah. Holy crap! What what stops a spiritual teacher listening to a scientist? Science teacher, vice versa. The absence of being calm in the present moment, like the absence of being calm while active listening? Question mark. Is, How do you, can can you be calm while active listening? This relates to what Cherubini said. It's like, can you actively listen when you're living for yourself and yourself only? Mm. When everything becomes individualized, there's no sort of questioning philosophies and right. working with philosophies and compromising to find one middle ground. It's I'm right and you're wrong. There's a, a straight line down the middle. And I think if more people start just living for each other and loving each other, that's when that that strict like black and white will start to fade and it'll, it'll just yeah. yeah yeah and i don't want to discredit people who have a lot of friends like the like what you just said people have a lot of friends that that's who they care about you know like for me it's a small group but for i know for zach there's i mean i can't count on my hands how many people that you're friends with like closely <laughs> like that's what matters it's, it's up to the individual too like to have to surround themselves with however many people that they actually care about and not because of some sort of status that they bring. Just love. Exactly. It's just love. I think that's when that 
like that hard straight line that you just talked about turns into a dotted line. Yeah. And then that reminds me of like biology when you talk about selectively permeable membranes of a cell, of like an animal cell. Ooh, I like that. Basically Damn. meaning that was good. Yeah, basically meaning like you allow, like you choose what you want to come into your cell or into your space, and you also choose what can leave your space. And when you allow that selective permeable membrane to function in a healthy, positive way, you now are able to enjoy your own personal perspective and take pride in it and own it and let it be the way of your life while also remaining open to different perspectives and not saying you're right, you're wrong, but saying and more often. It's not this or that. It's this and that. Right. It's mine wow. and yours. Now, <clears throat> does that come with a certain self-confidence and an understanding that I am? Yeah, I think you have to know are. that you're the cell. And that this is where I think calmness comes into play. It's like if you accept who you are, if you accept that you're a part of a bigger picture and you could um, find peace within yourself, if you could find self-love and have confidence in your philosophies and what you believe in, I think it will allow you to actively listen and hear mm -hmm. other people's opinions right. and fill in missing lines or fill in the, the blanks. And Damn. Because there's a difference between confidence and arrogance. Yes. 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 And uh, can, go, go, go for it. Well, no, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, because you had mentioned before as well that uh, calmness sort of resonates with you because you have a history. Oh, yeah, I get qu mad quick. Yeah, I get mad. Oh, I get ups I get flustered. And so do you feel that like a like the sense of confidence that you were talking about has helped with that? Yeah, because I'm just comfortable with who I am. I right. just. I just love Damn life. Right. Why? Why am I going to? Get heated. Why am I going to get flustered? I breathe. It's like, I'm me. I'm going to just do what I do. What happened today that I was just like, okay. Oh, we were outside. We were uh, outside and something happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I love Dr. Cherry Beanie. He's a mentor of mine. He's also a professor of Manhattan College. He's an amazing person. I want to say that for the record. However, during conversation today in class, he broke us out into little groups. And I genuinely felt like he did not give us enough time to speak with each other on certain topics. I felt like it was rushed. I second that. 100%. And I said that out loud, and <laughs> Jessica looks at me, and he's like, I'm just living life, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, that, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Just, uh, he said, literally, quote, I'm just going with the flow. If and I have 20 seconds to talk, I'm going to talk for 20 seconds. Why, right. am, why am I going to get mad right. about it? And I, in that moment, I made clear to myself and to Jessica, but more so for myself, that I'm not mad. It's just something that I would appreciate would happen if it was done that way yeah you know not that i'm angry but it's like dude give us more time there was not enough time to talk <laughs> but there's so much to talk about there is a lot to yeah. time. there is there yeah. is and he's he kind of for he's forced to be in that position right and he also probably wanted to get home see his wife I found his a, kids i found a solution what's up less groups or less people per group so that instead of five people having to go around in a circle, it's like three people. So yeah. you could each say a little bit. I think he needs to listen to this podcast. I, just I, this I feel like just he does. One. Oh, just does he clip. not? Just I don't think he's watched any. I don't even think <laughs> he knew hurtful. we had a podcast. I was like, yeah, we're filming for the podcast. And he was like, why are you so spiffy? He was like, I'm, we're filming the podcast. He was like, podcast? Yeah. And I was like, oh. I really Ron Charabini? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he's going to be a guest. I don't he care what anybody be. says. He After class. I want to get all the kin professors on it. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, it's maybe, just we, go to, maybe we go to them. Like, maybe he doesn't have to come to Kelly. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Do it on the road. <laughs> the, the road podcast. <laughs> like a nomad podcast setup. Ooh. But we kind of are a travel podcast. We, we, we can could set it. up anywhere, really. We could. We really could. To be honest. Just need some outlets. We're mobile. Yeah. What? I think we're just all so present. And yeah, calm. you know what? I'll say one thing. I'm calm as fuck right now. <laughs> Damn right. Yeah. Damn right. Damn right. I had a long ass fucking day, dude. I was up at like yeah. six o'clock. Yeah, not dude. even like five o'clock to five thirty this morning. And I'm yeah. still here trucking. You're trucking. But you can't not enjoy it. That's the thing. No, of course not. All right. That's I life. Question. I have a question for Ryan. Hey, what's up? How do you remain calm while still actively listening about a topic you don't care for? 
It's a really good question. Wow. It's a really good question. You know, I'm trying to think back of a time where that's occurred because I feel like it has because that's I feel like it's so relevant. Um, for a topic that I don't care about, it's more important for the person to just feel understood. The other person has to feel that what they're saying, whether I care about it or not, is true to them. It might not be true to me and it might not be true to the next person, but for that person, it's true. And that's mm-hmm. what's most important. Under, like being able to understand their truth and have them feel like they're heard. So by simply meeting them where they're at, not where you're at. Yeah. I mean, if people need to vent, you need to be sort of the receptor as an active listener. And I think we forget about that a lot because everyone needs to get their opinion out and everyone needs to say like, oh, I like that's what I think about that. But sometimes it just helps to be like the sort of pillow for them to punch into follow up question that just goes directly into what you just said do i'm sorry is it your responsibility to be that pillow that they punch is it your duty no it's not my duty whose duty is it for the person who cares about that person it depends Mm -hmm. on because i mean i'm thinking of a person that that you're close to or like yeah like it's my duty as whatever title they think of me, whether it's a friend, boyfriend, teammate, whatever that responsibility is, that's what I'm molding into because it changes for every single person. Uh-huh. You can't – one way of listening doesn't work for the next. Right. Like I don't know most of my like track and field teammates that well, but if they needed to talk to me, I'll listen to them as a teammate, but I'm not going to listen to them as a boyfriend or a, a friend, like a best friend. And when do you just say enough is enough? I I literally need time for myself just with zero, like nothing going on. Like, like what if like you're talking to your mom? I'm, I'm dead serious because this happens to me like in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to my parents and they're talking about something that I'm just totally not interested in. I'm not. I love you, mom and dad. I do. Thank you for everything. I, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I can't say it enough. But sometimes you all talk about some stupid shit like facts. On a real on God. note, on God. like I, I sometimes just have zero interest in it, and yeah. and w- your venting, your venting is now putting me at a mentally unhealthy place. So when do you draw that line? Like when are you just say, enough is enough? Listen, listen. I think that line is drawn in different places for different relationships, uh, right? As Ryan said, right. Uh, I just want to state. For the record, I'm a dope ass fucking boyfriend. You are. I listen to a lot of venting. I love you, baby girl. You vent a lot. Yo, don't leave him hanging. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you vent a lot, Almost. dude. And listen, I'm here for it. You need an ear to yap on? Talk to me. I might pull the phone away a little bit. I do that. She knows I told her I do that. I might pull it away, come back. <sighs> it sucks, babe. <laughs> Sorry oh, to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> We're all guilty. Of it. And she's but, like, I know. And it just makes her feel comfortable. Right. Right. As a boyfriend, it's my responsibility to make her feel heard. Now I'm caught. Right. The gig is up. So I'm, I might have to listen a little bit more now. But is that an active listening strategy for you? Like, you know that works for the dynamic that you guys have. Listen, I know it works in certain circumstances because... Sometimes it's just dumb shit. She's overthinking. I know it's overthinking. Uh-huh. And it's like, mm. she'll get over it in two days, not right. even. By the way, I'm sure she says like the same shit about you, too. So uh, I listen, I have poor communication skills. <laughs> I do not oh, open same. up. I don't open up nearly same. enough. I'm more of a listener than a talker. Mm. Opposites. That's why. Type attract. A, type B. Yeah, I'm just, opposites do attract. You know what I mean? But today, I w- all right, I've been f- going through this like little lag. Like, a lot like of jet my- lag? No, As no, all no, of like us do. Like a lot of my plate, I felt slow. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Got Mental it. fog, whatever. So then I woke up today. I felt phenomenal. Like phenomenal. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, why do I have these ups and these downs? And I just called Zach. And he listened to me talk about probably nonsense for like five minutes straight. Didn't say, just maybe some yes or like, mm-hmm, like. Mm-hmm. And then he said what he had to say. And I just felt listened to. And I literally said, I just needed to get that off my chest. 
thank you for listening. You have to no me. idea how good that makes me feel, considering I just opened up my life like to yeah. what I've been struggling with over. Because I'm really trying, and that makes me feel good. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm of glad. I'm glad. Oh yeah, we talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You felt comfortable to do that. I was gonna mention how you did it really well this morning earlier. Oh, like he just good. listened to me. I said my piece. That's sweet. Yeah, it was dope. It was good. Oh. I said my piece, and then he had a rebuttal. Then we just went back and forth like a normal conversation. Yeah. But I needed my like two to three minutes of just talking. We all do, man. It, it helps so much to just get whatever like stressors that are bothering you to just let it out. Whether you're writing it, I write a lot. I like. Okay, because I, I love journaling. Ask. If you're the person to not say much, I'll, this is my next question for you, Ryan. How do you let it out? I write. Od, like I. Ju- <laughs> I journal almost all the time about shit that bothers me like during pt school applications every five minutes i was banging away at my computer like it was such a stressful time and that was the only like the main thing that held me out because at a certain point like i was just saying like my girlfriend i was venting so much to her that i felt so guilty saying like all these stressors and it was every day i was like all right there has to be another outlet i mean of course, I, therapy is a really good outlet. Everyone should go to therapy. Yeah. Um, but for me at the time, it was just journaling, and I wrote so much. And I love singing, like we just talked Ooh. about earlier. In the shower, singing. I want to. I want to do some research actually for a stats class. I want to research what happens. Um, in the brain. Yeah, like Yo. when you sing before workouts. <laughs> That's just a side Or like, piece. yeah, when I play the guitar before a workout. Dude. Exactly. I started my day with the guitar today. You did start it with, yes. Can, make, can you make note of that? Oh, my God. I just hit my mic. <laughs> make can note you? of it for me? Yeah, I, I, can, I can write Yo, it down. You've been writing me. a lot of shit for me today. Yeah, wow. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm present. Yo, that's, that's actually super interesting. Yeah. No, I, I have a whole document called A Thought. That's what it's quoted. And it's just everything that's like that has bothered me yo when you're famous and you drop that you're making when i'm famous bread you're making yeah. bread they're gonna be like right how'd you get to where you're at a thought a thought boom release it <laughs> yo, a thought tm like yo trademark that shit it's Why got oh you were we were talking about this you wanted to start a blog yeah I and did. originally we wanted organic thoughts because that was freaking a sick ass name Thank but, you, thank you. I mean, like, you did you just say it? A thought? Yeah. What if it's just a thought and, like, every day you had a thought? We all have them. I just write it down. Ryan, please do something with that, please. I will, I'm, you know, for you and for this podcast, I and will. for you. No, 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 no. You need to end that the right way. Okay. For, for me, you. For the podcast. And for, for me. And most importantly. Yeah, try one more time. Take three. For you, for the podcast, for Chesco, for our guests, and most importantly for myself, Love I'm going to start a oh blog. Oh, my God. I just got chills. Love yourself. I'm holding you accountable to that. I hope you know. Thank you. Um, But, yeah, like when we were talking about the threshold like of where you draw the line, I think it's it's not suffice to say, but you feel it. You feel the line, you know, where it becomes too much. And I think that's something that you could probably work on too, Zach. Just feeling it out. Just yeah. listen to your capacity. And then eventually when you train that and you practice it, it gets better. It totally does mm. with practice. So you're a different story because you're going to listen to a lot of people in your life. I mean, we are too because mm-hmm. like physical, oh, ther- going into mental health. physical yeah. therapists are kind of like yeah, a normal therapist that they just mm-hmm. people talk their mouth off but of you is it's literally your job yeah to listen exactly mm. <laughs> that's kind of yeah that's kind of wild it's yeah like i'm low-key scared for it really hey but that's a good thing but like, and i think it's great yeah yeah i'm excited you as hell i'm excited i'm ex- i want to make this for the record for the clear anyone who's looking back on this i don't know when you're hearing or watching this whatever i want to make it very clear that I am super pumped. I'm super excited for what's to come and super present too. But we've already established that. Super pumped, super duper pumped for my future and my career in mental health, working with athletes or CEOs or the military or musicians or whatever, right? Performance, performance, mental health, 
performance counseling, right? However, I'm scared, and I think I need. To, I think it, some level of fear needs to happen because if you're not, you're not dreaming big enough. You couldn't say that to me this morning. Wow. You had to wait like 15 hours for me to yeah, hear that. Well, something wow. worked because we're here now. And that you was said it was a good morning. Sick. God damn. Damn, son. So when, I feel like when you're in those loops and you're on that down, yeah, you tell yourself it's okay to be fearful. <sighs> Embrace the fear. I'm writing that down right now. It is okay. Because that's you. Those are your emotions, and that's true to you. And they're real emotions. Mm. Damn. Yo, you know how I could tell he's going to be good, too? Like, he's been writing notes this entire time. <laughs> yeah. Like, you look like like such a psychologist That's right a big now. part of active listening, too. Yeah. You're writing down shit that, like, you want to remember later. And then think back on it. And you go to the person the next day, like, hey, I thought about what you said. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. That's not easy to do. Oh, of course not. Yo, when, like, I'm not even trying to, like, be a quote-unquote psychologist when I, like, talk to people in my room, but I'm an RA. I used to manage the baseball team last year. I talk to a lot of people, like, on, every day. I talk to a lot of people. Sometimes it gets exhausting and draining, but, I mean, when they come into my room, I have, like, a nice setup, you know, thankfully I have a nice, like, little couch, like, futon, and it takes me back to, pro- he's going to be on the uh, podcast as a guest, but Kyle, he sits in my room, and I have a, a, a sticky pad of notes. And every time he says something that I feel like gut intrinsically is right or that I, I feel like I need to write down, I write it down or I write a quote down that he could look at every day, right? And at the end, I'll have like eight or nine sticky notes. And I'll say, here, here's the sticky notes for today's session. And he posts it up on, on his mirror, and he came back to me a week later and said, dude, those sticky notes have like changed my life. Wow. And that was crazy for me. That's so amazing. That's the feeling. The empathy I was talking about, that's it. Uh, wow. You just know. It's Holy a crap. Gut. You just know to write it. I don't write it. I just feel it. But you have it. You yeah. feel it in the moment. In the moment. <sighs> wow. Calmness well, and active listening, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Before we wrap up, <laughs> we have to stay with tradition here, man. I want to hear from Ryan. Last words, gut punch to the throat. What does the audience need to know about you and what you brought to the table today? What do they need to know about me? Final life advice. I'm just an average kid. You know, I'm not I'm nothing special. I'm just your average Joe. But you know what? I care. I care a whole lot about what people say and I care sometimes a little too much. But honestly, sometimes people need that. Sometimes people do need someone who has just unconditional care and, you know, is able to just sit down and talk because I want people to talk to me all the time. And I just want to, like, have discourse with people. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen. Maybe this will help. But I, I I care a lot. And I just want people to know that. And I think the whole world would be a lot better if people cared just a little bit more every day. Dude, you're going to make me cry. A fine young gentleman. Ryan Tierney. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. The bone. Yeah. We talked. Yeah, we did.